Hello everyone and welcome back to Adobe Live here on Tuesday in the UK at midday. Amazing. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, that's just fine. Excellent. You can go ahead and do that. But where you really should be is at be.net slash Adobe Live because that way you can get involved with our amazing community and you can ask questions of myself, Tony Harmer, and also of my amazing guest, who today is my friend, Tixie. Hey, Tix. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Yeah, good. Thank you. I apologise in advance to everyone. I've got a bit of a cough from lingering uh, lingering corona. So um, please excuse me. I'll mute myself as much as possible so you're not listening to it all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it happens. But the amazing Tiggs Rice, incredible. I'm so glad that you're here because we go back quite a way, uh, you and I really, don't we? So Yes, uh, actually, if, if anyone looked at the promo material that went out for this, that photo is one I took of you, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> and it's one of my favourite ones. It's excellent. <laughs> which, which They used the tongue out one, didn't they, I think, with the flying so, helmet. Yeah, because yeah, you came along and did that. <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> so, so good. Well, let me just say a quick hello to some of the people we have mm. in the community here, because we have... And I keep saying this is the best community, and that's because it actually is Tiggs. They're really, really mm. brilliant. So let's say hello to some of these lovely people. Kirsty, first in the chat this morning. Hi, Kirsty. Some guy called Tim. I don't know any much about him. Uh, <laughs> Sandrine, she's here. Oliver, hi, hi, hi. And we've also got Sean Coastal. Guten Tag. There we go. Doris is here as well. Excited because it's photography, by the way. Oliver is. Uh, I ought to mention that also. And we've got Sarah here too. That's great. Hi, Sarah. Fantastic. So, yeah, we've got Mike as well. I could keep scrolling through the list, but there we go. Fantastic. So, Tigsy, Tigsy, Tigsy. It's just how I refer to you. And that's how you kind of like it's how you are for your friends, isn't it? Tigsy to your friends. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, actually, well, it probably stems back from Twitter because back in the day, uh, when we were on Twitter in the super early days when you could actually just get your first name uh yeah. tigsy is my twitter handle uh and it's just kind of it just sticks doesn't it that's yeah. like right full name everywhere else but i am not giving up tigsy like that 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 one name is sticking with me for the rest of my twitter life <laughs> it's so good whenever i talk about you at home and just say oh i've got tigsy on to you know it's tigsy I don't mm -hmm. say yeah. Tiggs, I'm on with Tiggs Rice today or I'm chatting to Tiggs Rice today or like when we came down and we had dinner, if you remember, with, with uh, my wife and uh, and Chloe, uh, yeah. one of my daughters. It's like, yeah, come down, meet Tiggsy. You'll love Tiggsy. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even need a last name. We'll just call it Tiggsy. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, so good. <laughs> but I suppose really for people who've, who've never been exposed to your awesomeness, we ought to tell them, <laughs> well, it's true. We ought to tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do. So how would you like best like to, how would you describe yourself in a in an elevator pitch one liner? Oh, well, uh, I call myself an empowering portrait photographer, um, which kind of covers both sides of the work I do. So uh, for the last 14 years, I've been working as a uh, boudoir lingerie photographer so empowering women femmes non-binary and gender fluid folk to show up and feel empowered in their bodies reconnect with themselves uh, but I also do <clears throat> commercial and branding side of things as well so it's helping people to show up and feel visible in their brands uh, through awesome luxury personal branding photography uh, so yeah em empowering portrait photographer would be the one I, I'd say um, mm. But yeah, I started the business in 2009, um, mostly through burlesque. Uh, that's sort of where my found my roots. Uh, my background's are actually graphics and illustration. Please. So I came from that. The retouching came before the photography. Um, I pretty much picked up a camera because I needed photos to retouch. Um, so I probably went about this really backwards. Um, and yeah. 14 years later here i am still absolutely loving are. it so <laughs> because i remember you i remember us sharing a ride well i gave you a lift home from somewhere at, at one point and you were telling me about that because i had no idea that your background was in illustration originally mm. 
uh-huh. and that you'd studied illustration. I remember us talking about that. Going, what? What? It's like that scratch record moment. What, what did you yeah. say? Yeah. But you did that because you're actually a mighty pencil person originally, weren't you? One of the people with like David Cousins, who we have uh-huh. on here, Ben the Illustrator, all of those um, Gemma, people. Uh, Gemma Carell. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, God, yeah. I, I loved the illustration. I think it was, um, I think just three years of uni just kind of knocked the drawing the love of drawing out of me and so at the end of uni I, I had to find something that I felt connected with again mm. and so that happened to be the photography um but the illustration oh, I'll tell you what it's coming back like I've been li- through little things like um uh calligraphy and I've been learning um learning how to like paint with because uh, I'm studying Japanese at the moment so I've yeah. been doing kanji with uh, the sumi e ink and working on that and through the calligraphy and the line art side of things it's yeah slowly I mean yeah. I'm not saying a career change is coming but <laughs> <laughs> yeah and at least the pencils are out of the box again right so yes yeah <laughs> yeah so there you are in fact it's um you, you do I mean your photography I mean we can go on through your backstory as you're doing a a little bit of work so I mean I know quite a bit about your backstory so we, we should be able to have fun with that but what are we going to do today then what are we exploring today Tix? Well um, I had a pretty exciting shoot yesterday and I thought probably the most authentic thing that I could bring today for us to look at is actually how I work through a shoot um, straight after so uh, yesterday I was at the de Havilland Aircraft Museum shooting some stuff for a upcoming workshop uh, that I'm going to be doing in a couple of months time yeah and um so i've got a vintage pinup model uh and an original de havilland mosquito plane um so yeah so these are some of the images that i shot and i thought we'd go through how this would unfold me working on a shoot and bringing it through to Mm -hmm. hopefully we'll have enough time to get through to actually like editing and export all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um so yeah so that's so exciting and i I've, I've got to be honest i love i love a really good pinup model and i also love a de Havilland mosquito made largely from balsa wood which is excellent <laughs> i know when they told me that they're literally built of wood and glue and like yeah. obviously a couple of screws and bolts and stuff i could not <laughs> yeah oh, i mean the <laughs> amazing thing in, wood in the air <laughs> i know the amazing thing is is that the structure of most aircraft in those days certainly the wing structures were typically involved in wood, but the mosquito made it light and very very fast but anyway we could talk about planes another time yeah absolutely <laughs> Our shared love of aircraft <laughs> yeah so yes. um so yeah so i've got some images here um i've got about 150 um actually this this is pretty much everything i shot yesterday no, okay. in fact it is everything so it's not just a round number i've picked you're seeing all the good and all the bad um so yeah so the first thing i will be doing then is bringing everything through to lightroom um this i've already done save us some time yeah. um and yeah for those of you who are familiar with lightroom um mm-hmm. obviously this is what we're going to be presented with so the first thing that i'd start by doing is going through and picking out some of my favorites um i do this with the star rating system so you've got zero to five. Um, I tend to use three as a really good baseline. Um, so that's like my midpoint and then I can go through and refine as as I go through. Um, you can set these up um, if you've got a tablet um, or any anything else that you're editing with as well. Um, or you can obviously use the keys. So zero, one, two, three, four, five on your keyboard will also do the same. Uh, so I'll start going through these and say maybe this one's one that I like you can see that I've already five starred this one get to those later um but yeah going through the things that I'm looking for at this point um firstly is focus uh making sure that my subject matter is in focus uh in this one if I zoom in it's a little bit blurry in there um or maybe for example not quite getting the expressions that I'm looking for as well um so having a quick look through these um, composition as well um, again another one that's out of focus so I wouldn't be picking this one um, and slowly working my way through having a look I used to do these the other way around I used to start with everything at a baseline of three stars and then I used to take out the ones that I didn't like uh, but I found that actually when you're starting when you're doing it that way it takes longer to cull because 
everything starts with a baseline of okay that's great yeah. whereas if you start going through it with everything at zero and then just pull out the favorites um i find that it took less passes in terms yeah. of how many times i had to go through the collection uh you can, <laughs> you can also see in the back here uh, we were actually filming this yesterday as well so steve uh, steve off. is hanging yeah. out in the background of quite a few of these shots um but actually that's a really important part of my shoot process as well is making sure that i'm capturing the whole day because mm -hmm. not only is it important to obviously get the shots but i want the behind the scenes things um so that when it comes to promoting a shoot or talking about a blog um people want to see the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. they want to know how the day went down uh, so actually every so often if you get your makeup artist or your filming person or i don't know whatever's going on um so you'll see quite a few of these in here as well uh so this is another one that i've uh, rated for later um going through you can see also um some of them are a little bit bright um so i have a little look at my uh, histogram up here at the same time just keeping an eye on where that light is and seeing whether things are fixable sa sa yeah. savable um great thing about Lightroom as well if you're working with raw files you've got those huge steps either way with raw uh so that if you <laughs> if you get things wrong uh you have got a little bit of room um I tend to under shoot um or under expose when I'm shooting as well because I find that it's easier to save the shadows than it is oh much easier to introduce light than to take it away quite often isn't it it's that yeah yeah um and it's really important with especially um fair skin tones if you're too far up at the end of the like sort of too overexposed mm. you just you can't bring things back um i just click click on this one you can see that because it was overexposed the face is quite flat in terms of yeah. detail so this is one that probably wouldn't end up in my final collection yeah i just realized i kind of said that the wrong way around but anyway it doesn't matter you knew what i meant <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> just i'm reading uh, one eye i'm trying to read something that's going on over there and, and there's a quote i don't want to lose it's from sandrine the less you show the more there is to be imagined which is a very oh it's a good sentence i love that i like it so i'm kind of focusing on that looking at the pictures out of my other eye i need to be more sort of my eyes need to diverge slightly from where they are please sir <laughs> so um as you can see we don't need to go through the whole 150 um i have actually split them out over here as well so anything that ended up with a three star or higher um i actually bring out and put into a second folder um so once you've got the images um you can highlight the ones that you want select all so i just pressed um command a for that and then you can come in and add a subfolder. Mm. Um, the reason that I do this again is because, especially if you're working with a client, if you're sending proofs, but not necessarily the whole selection, you might not want everything to just disappear back into, you know, oh, it made the first cut, but it didn't quite make the second. Mm. And if you have a client that's involved at any stage of this, that might come back to you and say, oh, you know what? I love this. Do you happen to have any more in this pose or this moment or in this outfit? so i can pull them out and i've got them as sort of like a, a a first cull so i know all the blinks all the sneezes uh the people running across shot they're all out of the way and then this is my second secondary folder that i can come to for any content that may not have made it into the first cut <coughs> excuse me that's okay <clears throat> so this is everything that made it through into that secondary folder um so you can see actually only about 37 so we're talking mm, like just under a third of this shoot made it through um and so we might end up with for example i've got three images here that all are the same pose um this is a really handy shortcut actually if you highlight several at the same time and press the n shortcut in lightroom it will actually bring everything up on the same screen for you so it's a really a uh, great way to start comparing images. Uh, for example, I've got three different versions of this pose, one arm up, one with the eyes open, one sort of leaning forward a little bit more, eyes closed. So I can look through these and say, actually, you know, which one do I want rather than having all three or, you know, scrolling left and right, trying to go through them. Yeah. So this is the one that I've ended up with. Um, <clears throat> 
again, I've ended up with quite a few of them in this one as well. So I've picked one here that has a behind the scenes shot, but I don't, I clearly don't need two of those. And then I've got four here of the same pose. So again, highlight all four. I've still got the, the, I actually know what it's called, the N. Do you know what the N, what this, because it's not compare, because compare is something else. Isn't, it, uh, <laughs> it's not before or after, is it? I, I actually, no. you know, Lightroom Classic is not something I deal with that often because I'm not dealing with images on the on the level that you are you know you're doing you're doing millions and millions of things are you after the keyboard shortcuts yeah because i edit can't menu what it's, so it should be edit what it's called that should be uh oh actually it's different in there too oh uh, yeah there we are. <laughs> well it's the n key it's uh, the n we'll key find yeah, out that's what fine. that's called if, i'm gonna anyone... i'm gonna actually <laughs> google it for you because <laughs> yeah because there's quite there's a few different ways so i think um You've got the compare, you've got before and after, yeah. um, which obviously you can get through down here as well. But yeah, the N key, whatever the, yeah. whatever this view mode is called, is one that I use quite a lot. Yes. Um, and you can get, depending on your screen size, like, you know, I'm, this is a 27 inch monitor, so I can see these as like, they're about postcard size for me on the screen. Um, but if you needed more, you know, you can get a good sort of 10 up and see them at a decent size. So you think of it sort of like viewing a negative yeah. or sort of like proofing gallery. Um, so like context sheets, love it. Um, mm. By the way, um, the N key, everybody's jumping at the chat just at the same time as I Google. <laughs> so it's, oh, I'm having a day. <laughs> it's called Enter Library Survey View. <laughs> so that's what it's for. There you are. Perfect. So yes, enter enter library survey view or N, yes. just N. Um, yes. So yeah, so this is the this is the one I'm using. So again, it's choosing between certain shots in here. Uh, as you can see, if I just go to the five star on these, uh, I did actually pick out three different ones of these. Uh, I probably need to pick. Oh, no, that's because I've got an edit in there. That's why we'll go to the edits later. Um, but yeah, so you can see in here the different images that I have picked out. So let's come back to <clears throat> one of these images and I'm just going to yeah. reset this back to, uh, excuse me while I scroll through my presets. Uh, fact, no, that's right. It's all good. Reset. I'm still, I'm still wondering how I managed to speak backwards <laughs> <laughs> earlier. What was going on in my head? Oh, I have no clue, but anyway, it's Tuesday. On. It is Tuesday. Tuesday yeah. You know. um so <laughs> this is this is what my image looked like before i haven't quite taken this to photoshop yet again it was only yesterday um but yes yeah, so you can see the difference between the first image and where we started from yeah so this is where it com comes out of camera and as i said i massively massively underexposed i'm probably about a stop out most of the times under because again like the skin tones are the most important part for me um so the first thing that i'm doing when i'm coming in is normally lightening this up by probably you know starting with 0.66 again if you're not used to the shortcuts of lightroom um, i'm holding down the shift key and clicking on the up uh, up arrow uh, to go up in thirds of a stop you can also click um on the uh on the number here and go in and do exactly the same so yep. either or but the hover is obviously a nice quick quick way to get there and we've got the slider <clears throat> i was just gonna say just remind me that is it the same uh if that you double click the slider it resets it back to the zero point is that the same yeah. in lightroom classic it's, yeah has been a while since i've visited that yeah um i think uh, like I, when I lose Lightroom Mobile, I'll be honest. I tend to be using it on on my mobile. Yes, same. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how the double yep. clicks and things work in the desktop version. Um, yep. But yeah, um, obviously, if you're used to the sliders, the sliders are here as well. Uh, so probably somewhere around this 0 0.76, 0 0.86. We'll see. Might bring that down here a little bit. Um, and then. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is straightening because I have wildly but horrendous OCD uh, and trying to correct these. So I come down into the lens corrections first um, and enable my profile 
corrections. Um, yep. So you can see that that's already toy. straightening up some lines. Yes. Your Hasselblad. My new toy. <laughs> oh, no. um, but I do love vignetting. Mm. Uh, it's something that I love. So I always keep that in. Um, again, you can come across all of these images and sync that as well. So highlight all, use the sync button. Uh, if you know that you've shot on the same lens and you want all the same settings, uh, you can just tick your synchronize across all of them um, just so that that's in there. So I've done my lens corrections. That will help me because at least all the lines I'm working with should in theory now be straight. Yep. And then come into transform. We have a quick look at auto. It's not really straightening those up too much. Um, levels a bit closer. Vertical is actually not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, or we can go in with guided <clears throat> and yeah. pick some of these lines. Uh, let's try this one. It's hard because most of the lines in this aren't actually that straight. But there we go. It's close enough. So it does make you wonder sometimes where the where the algorithm is getting its information from. It's interesting, you know, to look at when it doesn't do it the right way. I would kind of look and think, where are you getting that information then? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, especially with these like sort of A frames, it's a little bit harder for them to mm. pick out. Um, what my guess is, right? If you just go to, if you went to her knee that is projecting and went just a little bit below that, can you see that light and dark there? where you've got the floor, that area there. Mm. So just above that, you've got a bit of dark. And I think the algorithm looks at that and thinks, mm, maybe that's a floor and does it from there. Maybe. That's my Let's guess. See. I mean, that is the bit that's Yeah, straight. you see, look at that. <laughs> oh, you're right. Um, so, yeah, I tend to, I'll be honest, my OCD is quite bad that I tend to do a lot of this gu like with the guy I did and draw it myself. <laughs> yeah. um, but... The level and vertical are the ones that generally I tend to use the most because I'm normally worried more about like either, you know, on buildings and stuff, it's the it's the vertical lines. Um, and if it's horizons, it's the level or like landscapes and things. It's normally the, the level. Um, so, yeah, so those I tend to find I use more than the auto. Um, very, very rarely do I ever use full. Mm. Um, but yeah, and you can go in and change some of these as well um the vertical and horizontal you can see it's sort of like it's almost like a bit of a tilt shift yeah. um they can be really useful for things like if you really really want to get perspective right or it matters that the image has symmetry or anything like that in so i do recommend playing around with those um scale sometimes i use as well just so that i can get out and pick out a little bit more detail around the edges um because sometimes lightroom will crop like when it does the the upright you will lose things out the size of the image so sometimes if you need just like that little extra bit of floor um so for example this is a little bit close down here uh you can see that there's actually still a good chunk of space uh there's a touch of white corner coming in here but Again, I could crop that in just a fraction um, or constrain crop is yeah. a really quick way as well to do that. <clears throat> um, while I'm doing the transform, I'm also probably going to be looking at the crop here as well, uh, using my rule of thirds just to get that composition. Um, yeah. You can change that as well. There are different ones in settings somewhere. Yeah, because you you've change got per it from... percentage lines and you've got the... Golden spiral. Yeah, God golden ratio. spiral, yeah. So yeah, there's plenty of different options in there. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to use rule of thirds, generally speaking. That's the one that I sort of lean to. Um, in this shot, I've tried to line her eye up here on this rule of thirds and her body line as well. You can see, actually, this has worked out really good because we've mm -hmm. got like the bus line, um, obviously for pin up. Um, we've got the foot here pointing down on that rule of thirds and also her hand. It's not quite hitting that full um, but it's towards the action point. That's the, yeah. 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 So this is kind of what I'm aiming for with my, my composition lines. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I spent quite a lot of time actually going through on the composition because I feel like it's just such an important part of. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Part of this. Yeah. Yeah. And um, by the way, Sean in the chat is saying you can tap O to cycle through the overlays when you're in that um, crop mode. So thanks for that, Sean. Handy. Uh, also, Oliver really in the chat. Tip. 
It is handy tip. Oliver early said you can double click the section title to reset everything in it, like double click. Oh, so he's talking about like double clicking the sliders. You can actually reset a section. Uh, and yes, no, that's good. I'll tell you something I do know about you and your photography is that mm. when you first started exploring photography, you took a camera out from uni. I did. Yes. And I the to settings <laughs> knob was broken. <laughs> And so yes. you were immersed into the world of manual settings right from the word go. See, it all goes in, Tiggs. I didn't Absolutely. listen. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it was a Canon Canon 450D. Yeah. Love that camera. It was so good. I actually bought one. Um, so that was my first ever camera. But I borrowed it and the entire knob on the top, like where you've got the dial with like shoot M, A, V, yeah. whatever, gone. I, yeah. I don't know whether they did that to make us all shoot manual or good whatever idea, but like that, that thing was gone <laughs> throw that thing away <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i actually learned i i learned how to because that was the only camera that i had access to yeah you know poor student student budget like mm. you know who has here's the money to spend on a camera um so <laughs> by the powers of google back in oh gosh 2008 this would have been so yeah. Just to put that in perspective, I think YouTube might have been one, two, yeah. like, so YouTube wasn't a thing. You couldn't Google or YouTube how to use a camera. Um, so it was literally me reading very, very black and white text uh, manuals of how lenses worked and what aperture <laughs> <laughs> what aperture was and how depth of field was of like how that was the a thing. thing. Um <laughs> the circle because, of let's confusion. Be honest, right? Um so yeah, so it was a crash course. Um <laughs> the other thing was because I wasn't a photography student, I wasn't allowed to hire out the studios. So I found a cupboard and I, I mean I, it was a cupboard. Yeah, and hung things uh, from the pipes. Right? Yeah, it was Drapes. white bed sheets. Yeah, white yeah. bed sheets. Um, I had a yellow tungsten la lamp because there was no LED available or no flash. Yeah. Uh, so I need to dig some of those out. They are awful photos, uh, but I do love them because like, obviously that's where, where all of this came from. But yeah, I was shooting people in corsets in a cupboard yeah. in a university against a bed sheet <laughs> with a bedside lamp <laughs> and calling it art. <laughs> But I, do you know, I bet there is merit in them, Tiggs, you know, and the main thing is, you know, you start this, I think this is the thing that should be inspiring to people who are watching. You used what you had mm. at the time. Uh, do you know, uh, Bridget, do you know Bridget Gather Cold Day? Do you know, do you know Bridget? No. You might have met, you might have met Bridget at the photography show or something, but she does what she can with what she can. She's basically got a voile, like a net curtain, mm. and she makes her, her husband makes backgrounds for her with a paint roller and different other things. And she that. shoots dying flowers in front of, on this little tiny set that she's made using natural light through a voil for diffusion. And she does lovely stuff. Ch you check her out. Have a look. She's, she's really good. I'll send I you think, a link later. I think you've actually shown me her work before. It's a like beautiful fine art style, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was oh some God, hanging was in the something. studio when you last visited. I think so. There was some yeah. hanging there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah, you honestly, I I think there's this there's a whole misconception that you have to have the best tools and the greatest mm. things and spend the most money to have the best art. But I remember um, Lara Jade, fashion photographer, who mm. they I can't remember what the project was, but she ended up going out with a Fisher Price digital children's whatever uh, camera. And I mean, it was, we're talking like probably 1.8 megapixels. Like we're, we're talking very, very yeah, yeah. Nokia level. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first, <laughs> the first ever phone cam. Yeah. Um, and she was great. She created some amazing stuff and it, it's not the, it's not the equipment. It's literally, the, it's the person and the creativity that's within them. Like, yeah. That's the thing though. People say to, to good photographers and great photographers like yourself, your pictures you are so great. Camera. You must have a good. You must have a good camera. You must have a good camera. Yeah, you yes, must. That, yeah, absolutely. That, that it does all the work does for all. me. Just yeah. I, all I do is hold it. Exactly, but 
yeah i mean uh, <laughs> as you can tell i do yeah. like a camera yeah um, the roller flexes are, were, were no, noted uh yeah. <laughs> early on in the chat yeah a couple of rollies on <laughs> but i i think that's the, the great thing as well is trying different a different cram cameras different you know different equipment seeing yeah. what happens you could you know you could change one thing like you know change from flash to led or you could change mm. from artificial light to natural light and it can completely change the way you work mm. just by one one little thing so yeah it's good to get out there and explore every so often isn't it? Mm, it is anyway sorry I've, I've, I've we, we did quite a diversion there my fault again <laughs> got a full round uh so yeah composition um yeah. the next thing that i would be looking at as well is white balance at this point so i tend to try and bring things to neutral or what i consider to be neutral in every scene and then if i have to do any retouching i'll do that before i apply any form of creative editing yeah. and this is one of those things i learned from my <laughs> from the past um Things that are in fashion now in terms of editing may not be the same in five years, 10 years, 15 years. So if you're someone that is creating work for a, like for an archival, archival reason or a legacy sort of, you know, you might go back and revisit work. It's something to consider that actually maybe at this point you keep everything as neutral as possible so mm -hmm. that filters or um, what was it called? Spot color spot color yeah. was a thing for quite a while yeah. um and then everyone went off spot color seemingly so there was a lot of work that we had with with that in so or it could be that at the moment you're really feeling sort of like murky blacks rather than like full hard contrast um mm. so these are things that we can do as a non-destructive layer on top and then and then come back to so at this point i'm literally looking to correct skin tones uh, balance out the image get everything exposed correctly or my version of correctly yeah um because i say that loosely because i don't shoot with a light meter um i don't unless obviously it's commercial and it needs to be white balance i won't yeah. shoot with like a color card or anything so yeah. um, i'm doing this mostly by eye and i tend to use the histogram uh, again so we can see here we've got our gray section yeah and then above that, we can see the reds, greens, yellows, two different shades of blue. Yeah. Um, the first one I'm looking for here is where the blue sit and the yellow sit in terms of this histogram. Uh, so we can see at the moment, there's a lot more blue to the right than there, and the yellow is on the left. Uh, if I come into uh, my basic panel, and I'm just going to push this quite far up so you can see the difference but yeah. then if your image is sitting in the warmer side uh all of your yellow is going to be to the right and the blue is going to be on the left of the gray like where the peaks and troughs are of it so if you are doing things by eye you can get a good feel of where that might sit so i'm not looking at the image right now i'm literally just looking at the histogram mm. um but my work tends to lean just just slightly just slightly into the yellow yeah. um so i'm looking for sort of like that little yellow line down there um and you can see here <clears throat> she's looking a bit warmer um but she to me looks quite green um and again the histogram is showing that as well so i'm actually going to push the tint up here um probably somewhere about 15 ish again you can come in and do smaller amounts on there as well yeah. uh, but i'm looking for a skin a skin tone that feels quite natural uh to, to my eye anyway um, probably also worth pointing out it's very very important to have a color calibrated screen <laughs> to, to get these things right um, uh, but yeah so 15 17 I oh, are talking fine nuanced here mm -hmm. um, but yeah looking for something that to me feels like the model's natural skin tone uh, so yeah so I've got that one about here <clears throat> I can find you this all day but that, that's probably about where i'm going yeah um again it still looks a little bit dark so i might bring this up just a fraction more um and then if i need to i can come in with the highlights shadows whites and blacks uh or a little bit of contrast if i need to but actually looking at this histogram although it is a little bit dark i could lift the shadows slightly what i'm looking for is i do quite like a 
I, I like a little bit of solid black in there. Uh, but a lot of my work does actually print. So I'm looking for some space down this side of the histogram. Because if everything's pressing against that left side of the histogram, it will just print as solid black. Yeah. Uh, realistically, if you are printing, you want it a little bit further up. So you might want to come into, uh, for example, the tone curve here. And if I lift this little dot up that side, I can bring that away from yeah, total move black the blackest black somewhere <laughs> further up the ramp to make it relatively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, this is something that I would probably do unless I knew this was specifically and only going to print. Uh, yeah. Then I would do it at this stage. But again, that might be something that I'd look mm. at later. Um, yeah, the tone curve is a fascinating one. I do recommend mm. playing around with in that one. <clears throat> yeah. Did um, uh, are you still working on an ISO monitor, by the way? Because I think you were when you sponsored by yes. ISO for a little while. I think. Uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Still sponsored by them. So I have a um, I have an ISO color edge. So it's the yeah. it's it's probably I've had it for quite a while now. So I'm actually looking to upgrade it. But I've got the it's the CG two seven seven. I don't know if they still do that one anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're great because they self calibrate. So this will self calibrate it um, at I think it's about one o'clock on a sun on a Sunday night. So ready for Monday morning, um, cool. and it does it in. Uh, so this room, all the walls are white so that I don't have color casts mm. um, and I <laughs> normally work in the dark so actually having a light pointing at me right now and that light on feels really weird because um, there are I can feel the glare on my eyes sort of around the room yeah. Um, so yeah so if anyone is sort of getting into this serious sort of color accuracy um, yeah. it's sort of it, it is something to think about for sure There any uh, other questions put, coming up? No, no, no. I think we're all good. Uh, there's people talking about calibration right now. Uh, never color calibrate my laptop. Laptops are kind of tricky. Doesn't doesn't mean you can't do them, but they are tricky because you're looking at your perception of color. Whatever oh. angle you have that screen at is going to change the way that you perceive that color. Is very very tricky uh, to calibrate a laptop. Um, a color calibration device is money well spent, says Sandrine. Agree. Uh, when you do that all day, you can trust. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's like a smell in those Febreze adverts. You just get used <laughs> to color shifts. <laughs> that took me a moment to follow that, but that's quite funny. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Self calibrating. So, I mean, but the thing is, that's what I mean. That's at the that's at the higher end of of monitors. And if you're doing stuff that's going out for print, that's where you kind of need to be, right? With ISO, that that I had yeah. one. It's lovely. I don't have it anymore. I gave it to my friend Dean because I stopped doing Good print do. work. But yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it is something to think about. Um, the other thing, if you, I mean, obviously, you know, depending on where you're at, even mm. just little things like on your laptop screen, you can turn the brightness down. So you, it's a bit harder because the operating systems, I think, are stopping them from being so calibratable now. Mm. Um, but not working with your screen at Full brightness is a really good tip. Yeah. Um, the other thing to do is if your screen has, um, I think it's like called night shift mode. Um, mm. So it basically gets rid of the blue light and puts a warmer screen up before you go to oh, bed. True so tone. Like, that's the one. True tone. Um, yeah. Turning that off. Turn that off. off. <laughs> turn that off. Um, and also yeah. they can be, sometimes they'll adjust the brightness. So your phone will do it as well automatically mm. to the light that's around you. So turning that off as well just so you know that your screen is always going to be sort of neutral um yeah and avoiding reflection so yep. <clears throat> you can see this screen there's a window like here so there's a lot of light leaking in yeah um but the screen i work on is is that way and it's yep. got like a full monitor hood. hood on it yeah yeah i remember going to a place in leicester <laughs> once you know as a consultant i went there and they, they told me about how they had the highest standards for color in their print work yeah, those, we, we've got the highest standards of colour and I go into their room where their editors are and they're, true enough, they've got fantastic monitors, no hoods, right? Um, all facing but, windows. All facing, all with windows behind, yeah, all with windows behind the actual operator. So the thing, and also the background entirely was a mixture of colours and murals. So it looked really, really cool, but I thought you cannot possibly 
perceive color properly if you're looking at it competing with other colors in your environment you know not whereas i was always a fan of mid gray that'd be <laughs> yeah yes and actually i was i was about to say that's one of the yeah. things that you can do with with lightroom as well um i believe it's i see the preferences or catalog settings yeah uh but you can it's been a while since i've been in here oh yeah. here you go um so under preferences and interface you can change the um you can change the color of your background yeah. as well um i find that for me i work better editing on a darker gray as a neutral mm -hmm. um mid gray changes your perception of luminosity though if you go mm. too high or if yeah. you've got a picture of your kitten in the background on your desktop that also doesn't work it's cute though i've seen loads <laughs> of yeah <laughs> or snaps from my last vacation <laughs> <laughs> um anyway we should probably get back to some editing yeah, <laughs> sorry yeah carry on <laughs> well i was um... after you on a wednesday so we had an hour and a half but you know but we get what we get um anyway. so we've got this image here i've mostly color balanced it i've brought the shadows up just a fraction uh just to give me a little bit more space down here mm. um i don't really want to go too much brighter because again i think the skin's going to start burning out so probably leave the exposure here um and then i would take this through into photoshop at this point uh so let me just un undo these uh, so I've right clicked or control click if you're Mac, uh, edit yeah. in, and then edit Photoshop. So cool. So you've got another one of these workshops at De Havilland on the 10th, 10th of October. I'm getting that date right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this is actually going to be a creative play day for photographers or anyone really who has cool. a camera and wants to come down and... Uh, play with no restrictions um so we'll be at the de Havilland aircraft museum we have access to two original world war ii mosquitoes including the the first ever mosquitoes if you're a plane fan it's, it's worth it for the planes mm -hmm. um and yeah so felicity will be joining us alongside another model um and you can come along and bring your camera and have a go at directing posing lights will be provided um yeah just to get out of the monotony of the work day oh, um, i'm very tempted myself you know yeah bring camera get some files have a go at this you'll literally recreate this i suppose yeah um but yeah they um <clears throat> it's such a cool place um so we've got a sort of like rosy the river to look um there's also some uh, actually i'll bring that one up and have a quick look um at the other end of the workshop um so this this was a shot again of me sort of doing behind the scenes from yesterday um uh steve the uh, by the way he's close because i specifically said to him could you respectfully and not sensually <laughs> take some close-ups of this lingerie which is why he's standing so close to her um but the lingerie is modeled on an original piece that belonged to Pat Pat patricia natchville who is the she's the third cousin of the queen and in world war ii her sweetheart at the time uh stole some um escape silk escape maps which obviously silk was rationed in yeah, the war yeah, yeah. brought them back and her one of her helpers basically turned them into lingerie for her out of the escape maps so this is not the original one but this is uh very that closely modeled so cool god i'd forgotten the... about escape maps mm -hmm. a silk yeah I'd forgot. oh man right yeah yeah uh so yeah um i need to find my way back to photoshop hang on there we go yep. perfect uh so yeah so we bring this one through actually <clears throat> there's not huge amounts that i would be doing to this image um i might sort of pick out some of the i sort of soften that just a little bit under the eye but actually the skin's photographed really nicely here um so actually i'm just looking for things that might catch the eye and take focus from where we've pulled on those rule of thirds in the composition um so i don't know about anyone else but there's this little white spot here that's really drawing my eye uh so the first thing i'm going to do is just get rid of just a couple of these points around the image that just might draw some focus um again not huge amounts here um i'm trying to keep sort of everything sort of integral on the plane i might just get rid of that little 
line underneath there mm. um and then there's a little bit in there so at this point i'm just going around and anything that pulls focus from the model felicity um is my is my first point of call um, a lot of the images uh, through this set had tape on the floor, so like coloured masking tape. So there were green lines, yellow lines, that kind of thing. Um, there was another bit in the plane, which you might see in a couple of other images, where there's, there's a little bit of metal on like one of the sort of, I'll call it a gear stick because I don't know the full plane mm. term. Um, but like those pulling focus in there as well. So going through and pulling those out. Um, I actually have a really, really strong uh, body positivity mindset when it comes to editing bodies as well. So um, I wouldn't go in and start really shifting someone's body around. Um, the only things that I would do is, so for example, if you have stockings or elastic, sometimes elastic digs into skin. Yep. So I might pull that out slightly. Yep. Um, but generally speaking... Oh no, you are... Your 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 stuff is really empowering for women and 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 for uh, and for others as well. It's it, you know so it, it's a good thing that you do that with your body positivity and you make sure that you're not tweaking people to an ideal which is unrealistic. You know you know the things that we talk about quite often. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really important to capture people how how they how they look on their best day, but like authentically how they look on their best day mm. um but one of the things that i do love the liquid vital for which is what that that's kind of known for is hair um yep. so you can see here we've got a victory roll but it's kind of looking a little bit weird here so i'll come in and sort of round that out a little bit but also just give it a slight little bit of volume um so we haven't changed it too much but just sort of bringing that out um yep. again just a little bit of volume at the back there just to balance out the hair um but that's sort of it. I do, I do love liquefy on a bit of hair. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of volume? <laughs> so, me, for well, you know, me so too. I have a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so going in there and um, sorting that out a little bit. Um, I know I also mentioned that there was a little bit of shad uh, shadow under the eye, and also there's quite a lot of darkness here around the wrist as well. So I will use um, Dodge and Burn. Um, I have this set up. Um, I have a Z Labs tablet, so. Um, Let's see oh there's my camera uh yeah. there are three buttons on my pen um so i have the bottom one set to right click effectively yeah. um one of them i have set up as a shortcut action for frequency separation uh for skin retouching and the top one is um is my dodge and burn yeah. um i've done that by coming into my actions panel uh yeah. creating the actions i need um i don't think i've really got too much time to go into those in mm. massive detail um but what you can do is set them a yeah 50 percent gray um, layer as a dmb layer yeah 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 so yeah. um you can see here it's sort of created that that gray right down the bottom right um but if you set your actions as functions so you can give them a shortcut of function one to whatever um you can actually use these to create shortcuts that are really easily easily manageable there as well so yeah mm -hmm. so basically my shortcut on my pen <clears throat> is f2 yeah. um so i'm gonna head into uh my dodge tool uh which you can see here or shortcut oh if you're a shortcuts person um i'm working on my mid tones because we're working on a mid gray layer um, and I have my spo exposure set to about 10. Um, so the purpose of this is to, if I lighten up that gray layer, it will lighten up everything underneath it as well. Um, so I'm just gonna come in and just pick out some of these sections here. Um, if you struggle to see this in color, um, you can always come over to, uh, for example, a get a black and white adjustment layer and pop that over the top. Um, just make sure that you're dodging and burning on the dodge and burn layer. Um, but some people find it a little bit easier to see what they're doing <clears throat> working on that black and white instead rather than working with the nuance of colour. Um, yeah. So I'm just picking out those, or sort of bring, blending that in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to pull out the highlight. Just a fraction there, just pull up the cheekbone. There's a little hot spot, well, a dark spot on there. Um, let's turn that off so you can see. 
the before and after. So yeah. I just added a little bit to the cheekbone and lifted underneath the eye. Um, I probably would spend about sort of like five minutes on this, um, just bringing those up again with the wrist here as well. <clears throat> just lifting that up slightly. Um, it is looking quite, there's quite a lot of color difference in here as well. Yeah. Um, so let's get rid of that black and white layer. Um, I'm going to merge these. Um, <laughs> this isn't a shortcut that exists, but just so you know, you can create your own Photoshop shortcuts. And I have command and then forward slash as merge everything. Um, so it just flattens all of my layers. Um, this is not a non-destructive workflow, but for the ease of today, it's very helpful. Yes. Um, and then I'm going to press the other button on my pen, uh, which is my frequency separation setup. Um, so that one is it's called unicorn skin in my nice that's a great name for it <laughs> um but basically what this one <clears throat> for those who haven't used frequency separation before uh let me raise that up a bit um you can see that it splits my image into a texture layer uh so that holds all of the texture details so you can see very faintly there's like sort of outlines uh, you've got like teeth, the hair, all of that yep. stuff in here. You've got the color layer, which basically is a blurred version of the image that was there. Um, and then a completely blank color correction layer. Uh, but the three combined together um, basically give you the exact same image that you had before, but you can work on the texture and the color independently. Yeah. So for example, if you're working with skin, you might want to keep the natural texture there, um, like we are sort of around on the skin uh, like wrists and things but you might want to go in and say actually I, I would like this to be a more unified color so with my clone tool uh, which is shortcut s um, I'm working with an opacity of 10 percent and a sample current and below so that's picking on the that blank layer and the color underneath yep. um, I'm going to sample using the alt key And then very gently with short strokes, come in and lift some of that color. Now, I don't want everything to go because I still want it to look like a wrist, uh, which obviously is going to have some definition there. So this probably at this point is a little bit too far. So if I come in with <clears throat> uh, a pressed V to reset to sort of neutral, uh, like what's this called, tool called? Move tool. Um, yeah. I use shortcuts so often, I don't actually remember what things are called at times. <laughs> um, so I've got that, and then I'm going to set this to maybe 50%. Um, and you can see that just sort of lifts that up a little bit. Um, we could go up a little bit higher to 60, 70, but again, I think I'm losing too much of the wrist detailing there. So <clears throat> 40, 50 here would be fine. Yeah. Um, I'd probably go in a little bit more on that, but obviously I'm very conscious of time. Um, but yeah, so that's a really great way of getting that skin unified without <clears throat> losing all the detail. Um, it's also really great for retouching hair as well. So you can see here, we've got like a little gap in, in there. Um, I'm gonna just reset that with a set, second one. <clears throat> Again, this is why it's handy having this set up as a shortcut. Um, I can't see my screen here we go right current and below so i'm going to pick on color here and i'm going to just brush that in so you can see that i'm keeping some of that detail of the hair texture but can add in and start filling some yeah. of those gaps again this is probably something that you'd want to spend about sort of five minutes on um just making sure that you're getting that texture in there um so that it doesn't look too repetitive um but suddenly that hairline is looking more full there as well yeah uh so once i'm done um this is the short short version um i'm going to save that image uh so command s on that one to save mm -hmm. Come back into Lightroom and in a second that one should pop up. There we go. Uh, so they are 
connected to each other so you can see the before and the after um not much has changed you can see especially around on this left hand side a little bit here some on the floor the image just has that little edge of cleanness to it now yes and the hairline is looking a little bit fuller mm. um and at this point this is where i'd start maybe doing some of my creative processes so if i wanted to add i don't know some light leaks for example or um anything really I and mean, one of the main ones that i tend to put on is um as i said i, I do love a vignette um <clears throat> but instead of doing it through the vignette tool i'd use a um radial mask yeah uh so draw one of these on um let's go for about minus one and invert that so that it's um around the edges rather than in the middle uh, i'm just going to bring that out pop that over so now suddenly uh she pops more in the image so this yeah. is the before and then this is the after so i'm using that that vignette effect to basically draw the eye into where i want in the image um and just sort of darkening off those corners um so yeah i love that that's kind of it in a nutshell for today uh, yes yeah i I'd have to have you back tigsy do a full a full retouch maybe do a full retouch yes in the meantime what i ought to i ought to mention by the way i've got your book because it's <laughs> fantastic and uh i ought to mention that so if you want to check out tiggs's stuff uh you could do a lot worse than finding out uh, more about her and her work with her book strip tease which is brilliant you can find out more about tiggsy of course with at, it's at tiggsy isn't it We've we've already gone over that ground. I think. Uh, yeah. So at Tig I'm one of those people at Tigsy on Twitter, but anywhere else I'm at Tigs Rice. At Tigs Rice. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, uh, to be fair, Tigs is one of those weird names. If you type it into Google, you can pretty much find mm. all of me on page one. So <laughs> it's the benefit of having an arch name. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, my favourite, by the way, is Immodesty Blaze. Partly because here's a weird. Mm. You know, I like weird triangles where weird things connect up. Mm -hmm. You know, in threes like that. I was thinking about that. That uh, I know the daughter of Neville Colvin, who was one of the Modesty Blaze. I know Immodesty Blaze is a different thing, but Neville uh, Claire, his daughter, Neville uh, Colvin's daughter, was one of the illustrators who worked on the Modesty Blaze uh, strip. There you go. Wow, she's crazy. Oh, that's so that's a triangle. To I love yeah, triangles. Absolutely. Uh, do you know they say like there's six degrees of separation yes. um, between people? I think with you, it might actually only be about two. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people I don't know. Yet. Yeah, but then the rest <laughs> of us know them. <laughs> oh, Tiggs, it's been lovely having you here. I mean, I, I, I'm so tempted to come on that workshop, you know, I really am. I'm going to be checking my calendar in about two minutes to find out if I can come along. Absolutely. Be great. I think it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. It's not live yet. Give me a couple of days to get it live because uh, yeah. I have to edit these to get them up on the page. This is uh, true. So, yeah, uh, when this yeah. is done later, I will get that up and live. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's been such a pleasure. Um, are there any other questions? or comments? No, people Anyone? have been enjoying it. People have been chatting just uh, just as you've, as you've been going through um, and just really, really enjoying it. You've, I, it's always a good sign, you know, when people are just validating what you're saying, like going, oh, yeah, I always do that. Or, Perfect. you know, press this key. It means that they are listening, which uh, which is really good. And they've been enjoying it. So we've had a good crowd on. And, uh, yeah, I'll all good. Go but no questions and... at the moment, as far as I can see. Uh, we're talking about education, uh, just there. But, no, we are pretty good. Fabulous. Oh, well, yes. thank you so much for having me. It's been such a joy. It's always it's always lovely to spend time with you. Um, and I, I'll Likewise. have to go through and read everyone else's comments and see what other tips and tricks they've got as well. Share the knowledge. Yes, yes indeed. All right, then. Well, everybody, thanks very much for joining us today on uh, Adobe Live. Tomorrow, I'll be back with my friend Raquel Costa, which is going to be excellent. So Raquel is going to be doing some stuff around color and shadow and all of those different things uh, tomorrow. So excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing it. But for now, from Tegsy and myself, it's cheerio. Take care now. Bye. Bye.